Hi, I'm Ben. And I'm Ben. And we're from Gears and Gasoline. Valvoline invited us down here to their powertrain testing lab in order to get a look at these two engines that both have 500,000 miles on them apiece. Valvoline has had them on their chassis dynos for the last handful of years, just turning miles and miles every single day. Both of these engines are small little four-cylinder, 2.3 liters. They make about 280 horsepower in some Ford Explorers. The only difference between these two engines is that one of them was running Valvoline standard conventional oil, and the other one was using Valvoline full synthetic for the entire time. We're not going to tell you which one is which, but as you watch us tear these engines down, see if you can figure out which one is running the standard conventional and which one is running the synthetic. Let me see if I can visually identify what oil this is. So the oil change interval for these uh, were about 10,000 miles, which is, I believe, the service interval. I can't tell what this is. No? It looks it's... like it could be in synthetic. Yep, like... that's oil. It's oil. <laughs> <laughs> Here, let's see if there's a difference on this one. Yep, that also looks like oil. So the first step is we're going to take all the accessories off the engine, which is all of the uh, alternator, water pump, intake manifold, all the extra stuff before we actually get to the core of the engine. Oh, okay, we got we got the first the first glimpse inside. How do you look? I think it looks a little darker. Uh, it does. It looks look a little look... darker right around there. Yeah. Like that's that's not oil, that's like me wiping it. Definitely shinier on this side. I would be having a much harder time with this disassembly if it wasn't from John here from Valvoline. He's uh, the technical know-how. <laughs> He's helping me take this apart a bunch. This is a spotless engine compared to what I usually work on. How's the, how's the gasket surface on your coolant seal? Oh. Whoa, yours looks a lot different. Pretty significant. Yeah. yeah. This is not a coolant test by any means. Yeah. Both engines ran the factory coolant, and it is surprising how much more like tarnished that this engine is with the coolant. You know, I've kind of been with the project since we purchased the Explorers new in 2020. So we actually went with a cycle that's uh, it's kind of based off of a standard cycle. We actually modified it a little bit. It's, it's not like just flat out cruising all the time. It's actually going down to idle and ramping up and come back down and ramping up. So it's like stop and go, like a normal person would have that experience. When we first started, we ran everything exactly how Ford specified, so 10,000 mile oil drains. You know, we were sampling every thousand miles. Ben, how does your belt look? I think, I think mine, mine's got to be the synthetic belt. No, this is definitely the synthetic one. Yeah, the, see the wear from um, the synthetic oil on the, on the belt uh, was much better. You can see way, way less varnishing on, on mine. These are actually drive-by wire. So we put in some uh, voltage isolators and actually set it to, directly to the throttle pedal. We drive it by wire, just electronically. No drivers, just computer controlled. I mean, I just can't believe that this has 500,000 miles on it. I don't own a single car that has like 200,000 miles on it, and they all look worse than these. Yeah, so. this has more mileage than all of my cars. Yeah. Ben, what does your, hmm? your filter line look like, whatever this is? Pretty dark in there. Yeah, yours looks better than mine, though. Does it? Yeah. I think you're going to see a ton of varnish on the conventional, and I think the synthetic's going to be pretty clean. All right, so it is worth noting that these engines did not go 500,000 miles without issue. One of the wastegate actuators failed on one of these engines, and they both had catalytic converters fail, so that is worth noting, but I mean, 500,000 miles, I'm surprised there's not more. Yep, that's a turbo. That's a, that's a hefty turbo. It's a pretty big turbo. I'm most impressed by the exhaust LS size. Right? Yeah. yeah. Pretty cool. Now, Ben, it is worth noting, uh, just take the turbo off, and the, the side of the engine is much more oily than mm. your engine. Yes. Uh, your engine looks like it has 50,000 miles on it, and this looks like 150. It's worth noting, though, that both of these engines had their own individual tiny little failures over the course of testing. Yours had a uh, front seal leak, which probably explains how all this oil got flung back here, and then this one had a rear main leak. Pretty much the whole test, I never referred to what oil was in which, just to kind of keep the uh, mystery alive, even amongst everybody here at the lab. I was really mainly the only one that knew which one was which. When we were taking them apart, I guess it kind of came became apparent which one was uh, the synthetic. You want to take off the valve cover and really see what we're working with? Let's unseal it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Oh, okay. Whoa. All right. Okay. There's very, some tarnish. Very golden, though. But look at those cam lobes. They, those look beautiful. Whoa. Oh, my gosh. That is like maroon. <laughs> right off the bat, we're pretty confident which I, ones. I think I know what's yeah. what. We ran them at the same time, side by side. Same conditions, same temperature outside, same humidity, uh, same fuel. Everything's the same. 
Only difference was the oil. You got a little more varnish, don't you? So, wear, wear on this one's looking good. Wear on this one. Uh, the wear still looks good. Yeah, it looks good. Wear looks good, but the varnish is. Uh, significantly, significantly worse. worse, yeah. So what is like a downside of varnish? Like why do I care that it's red as opposed to like closer to OEM color? Well, it can um, actually insulate your parts, um, make them run hotter and whatnot. Okay, so it's building building up like a coating basically. Yeah, yeah. It can cause things to stick. Can that yep. clog up? Your buckets could start sticking. Mm -hmm. And this kind of goes to like stuff coming up. Mm -hmm. All three of these gaskets stayed, oh, stayed on the stuck. head. My guess is clean, clean off. And yeah. yours came off all clean. Oh, that looks good. That's not, that's not terrible. Oh, yeah. I mm. heard it from over here. Yeah, actually, we have some co like coagulation here. Again, my gasket's stuck, but like this is like buildup. That is pretty stark. We did extend out the, the drains on them, but we were, you know, sampling every thousand miles, so we kept that under control. It was very meticulous. Probably much more stringent than the average consumer would do. A lot of people don't even check their oil level, and here we are checking level every uh, eight hours, so. Ooh, looks the same as the valve cover. Wow, even the guides look good. So, I mean, even though, you know, the conventional had more varnish on it, wear was still really good. Uh, even performance-wise, it, it started to get a little rattly at the end. You know, it could have been, we saw that the timing chain tensioner was a little kind of stuck. Could have been better, but. I'm, I'm noticing it's like kind of caking up right on top of the tensioner here, and it's in the tensioner too, which I'd imagine would start affecting the functionality of the tensioner. It's just, you can just see it's, it's just caking up on top. We call that sludge. Sludge. That is, is that the technical it term? It really is. Yeah. There's a sludge rating that you do on okay. these. Yeah. Does this all look just that about what you would expect for a conventional? At this mileage? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this looks like a mirror. Honestly, I'm so impressed. I Almost every engine that I've ever taken apart looks worse than this. Did you just pull that off? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I might need a little. Are you serious? Yours yeah. is stuck? Mine's stuck. Oh, wow. I don't know, Ben. I'm still holding that hope. This one might be the synthetic. You think? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, it's everywhere, dude. Nice. That's pretty, though, kind of. Yeah. It's kind of, yeah, you guys it's are kind like of. like anodized. You've invented a new anodization technology. <laughs> Didn't stick coming out. That's good. <laughs> I would hope not. Man, <laughs> Easy. Even the buckets look good. I can't even tell that they've even had contact. So what we're looking at is everywhere that the metal is contacting another piece of metal, it looks fantastic. So that's where you're gonna see the wear because this is turning over and it's it's constantly rubbing on another piece of metal, but that film of oil is what's protecting it in between and it doesn't even look like the metal has been touching. To be fair, <laughs> it doesn't look like it's been touching on this side either. All Again, all the wear surfaces, even on the conventional, right. look great. Carbon buildup on the retainers and keepers of every single exhaust valve as opposed to on the synthetic, we're assuming, synthetic engine. You can see that there's no carbon yeah, buildup on right the front there. valves. So we do have a little on the back oh, no. side here, it's here. but I it's really only those two, and then it just gets no, much better. I'm gonna catch you here in a second. <laughs> Put you back into it. All that varnishing is making this more difficult. Yeah. Yeah. All right, moment of Two truth, Thorn. All right, let's see what we got let's get the heads here. off. Ooh, that's a little sticky. That looks uh, like, a, like a normal tops of pistons. I mean, it, it's a lot of carbon buildup, but it's 500,000 yeah. miles. Oh, oh, yeah. It's full of oil. How about that? Ben, does yours look like an oil pan? It looks like a red oil pan. Well, mine looks like more of a yellow oil pan. They look like different engines. They, wow, yeah. That's nuts. Yeah. It's red versus yellow. Thick bearings. Yeah. Looks good. That is so impressive. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Even though we saw the synthetic perform, you know, great. Conventional was still a uh, Valvoline formulation we made. A little more varnish, a lot more varnish, but still the wear was great. Still performing good. Oh, perfect. All the bearings, All the bearings stayed. stayed. Yeah. 
Ours did too. Sweet. Yeah, so this is just like a little example of bore polish. And bore polish in, in our testing world is those areas that are instantaneously recognizable as a mirrored finish. So when you look around, everything looks matte, and then boom, you see that really shiny spot. There's a little bit right on the ring reversal here, a little touch of bore polish. But I mean, these engines had good combustion, yeah. so that's, that's why it's not crazy. Okay, yeah, so here we're evaluating the oil pans off these two engines. We're gonna use these scales that just helps you to identify the deposits. You kind of match up the deposit. As you can see in the oil pans, I've, I've made some, some crosses, if you will. In, in this oil pan over here, it wasn't removed at all. So it's a very hard deposit. And the deposits on the right, they were much softer so that they were easily removed. And we're gonna actually going to be rating the the parts that are wiped. This is just under four. Uh, and then this other uh, oil pan here, you know, it was it was closer to the eight. And looking at the rest of the engine, it's gonna tell the same story through all the parts. They're all pretty identical in deposits. The rough estimate rating here, I mean, you would be like in the fours with this, like going back to our varnish scale. And this one here is, you know, seven and a half. The big takeaway here is this one, you notice we've removed the rings and that's, that's standard protocol. You remove the rings so that you can evaluate the deposits um, behind the rings. And in this piston here, um, the rings are stuck in its groove. Uh, that's due to the deposits uh, forming in there and it's kind of pinching the rings, if you will. So this second compression ring and the, the oil control rings are stuck, which uh, in any testing is an automatic fail but uh, we, we, uh, we just leave those in there and evaluate around them. When you have rings like this that are cold stuck, you know, it might not be such a problem right now, but in the near future, they could turn into hot stuck rings, so meaning that those rings will still be stuck in its groove while the engine's under normal operating temperatures. And when that happens, you'll start losing compression, fuel economy, and, and decreased power. We did see more carbon deposits on the pistons for the conventional. They kind of manifested their way into having a total of uh, seven stuck, cold stuck rings, whereas the uh, synthetic, it did still have one cold stuck ring, but the synthetic was, was significantly better. One of the engines had a uh, turbo wastegate failure, so we ended up replacing the whole turbo due to that failure at 200,000 miles. Now, if you look at these compressor wheels, can you guess which one has 500,000 miles on it, which one has 300,000 miles on it? This one here only has 300,000 miles on it, and it's actually worse deposits. A huge thank you to Valvoline for having us down here to check out the culmination, what has been literally years of rigorous and meticulous testing by you guys, and I would say that the results are pretty stark and speak for themselves. Yep, this is literally the oil that was used in this engine, Valvoline Extended Protection, and Ben, I am so glad that I'm already running this in my engines at home because I want my engine to look like this if I can make it 500,000 miles. Yeah, this engine looks like it hasn't been run hardly at all. Like, it's so clean inside, it's crazy. I think you could throw this thing back together and, and keep it going. As a matter going. of fact, maybe we should do that. You wanna put it back together, John? We... Let's, let's do it. Yeah, 500,000 more miles. You mean them, right? I'm not helping at all. I'm not lifting a finger. <laughs> wow, okay. Yeah.